Ah, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Get Busy. Hey, we took a brief vacation last week, but we're back here, uh, ready to hit it. You know, as always, we couldn't do this without you guys, our dream audience. So thanks for joining us this week for another epic show. Shout out to our dream team panelists this week. Um, <laughs> do we have any panelists? Well, we've got myself and Kit, and I think Kristen will be joining us here in a little bit. Hey, Kit. Hi. Good morning. How's it going? Good morning. I just sipped some of my orange juice and I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. You have energy. You know what? I, d I haven't even caffeinated this morning. It's been a crazy morning already. Uh, we've already had a little bit of a hot mess, but you know what Mia Voss says? Just let the hot mess happen. Let let it go and let um, just let get busy happen. So this week, we're super excited to have as our guest Cheryl Clemens. Um, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, Carrie Meyer was on the show, and we all went crazy over her touching story about her adopting her daughter, uh, the way that she gives back to the communities where she sources her components, and of course her amazing pieces of jewelry that she offered at such affordable prices. Well, this week we're flip-flopping coasts again. It's been East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Now we're back sort of on the East Coast. Um, Cheryl will tell you a little bit about where she is right now, but uh, but she's headquartered for her job in New York City. Um, welcome our esteemed guest, Cheryl Clemens. So Cheryl makes her living as a senior project manager, setting up big software installations for, or, I'm sorry, yeah, setting up big software installations for big business. But while that's what pays the mortgage, her real passion is food, and the inspiration for her new venture, oh, we just lost her, that's part of the hot mess we're enduring this morning, uh, was founded to help entrepreneurs nurture their food, fat, their food passions. Fund the Feast, which went live on February, 20, February 1st, 2014, is a crowdfunding platform for all business ideas that are food-centric, so anything that's food-related, including uh, cooking gadgets, cookbooks, food products, or opening up a restaurant or a wine bar. So anything food or drink related, um, Cheryl is all about it. So a little bit while we try to get her back on uh, the panel, a little bit about Fund a Feast. So Fund a Feast is an exclusive crowdfunding platform for food and drink campaigns. So if you're a food startup that needs a little bit of funding, launch with Fund a Feast. The Fund a Feast mission is to help food and drink startups fund their dream. Um, so I'm going to work here. Maybe Kit, if you can take over for a minute and wing it for me. I'm going to try and get Cheryl uh, back in here. So once again, welcome Kit. Yes, How's it going hi. This morning? <laughs> And, uh, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I should tell you that I loved your description for this event. Um, you said, uh, grab your bagel and cream cheese, you know, taking inspiration from Jerry Maguire. You had me in bagel and cream cheese. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so how are you doing? How was your vacation? Let's talk about that for a bit. We'll be trying to get her. It was good. You know what? If you can, chat, if you can just chat for a minute, I'm going to work and get Cheryl in here. So sure. can you wing it for me? Pick a topic, any topic, and go to town. Pick a topic. Hmm. <laughs> well, I've been topic. actually, I've been actually, food is one of my favorite topics, so that's great. Uh, <laughs> I've been looking at the website actually. I think I, I would let me just put the link to the website first on the events page because I think everybody should go and check it out. It's it's really colorful and it's it just the description just you know makes me want to support this amazing mission. Really. Uh, let me see. I just I just found something here that I wanted to share, but I didn't want to share it until later, so I need to find it now. <laughs> Let the hot mess happen. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. What did I want to find? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. What is that? Uh, 
Okay. Well, while Kit is searching, um, let me tell you a little bit of, about uh, Cheryl. She's actually in Ottawa right now, and she is helping her parents with something. I'm not 100% sure. But the reason why she was in her backyard was because the phone is ringing constantly. And so she had to, she couldn't figure out a way to get them shut down. So she had to just jump into the backyard and, uh, and uh, hang out with us in the backyard. And I see her popping up again. So hopefully we have a, we have a connection here um, that works with Cheryl. But uh, first, let's let's give a shout out to our dream audience. Anyway, we have our wonderful dream audience here: Carmen, Christopher, Cheryl. Thank you so much for always, always, always joining us. We love you so much. Just wanted to yes. throw it out there. We totally appreciate the support. And look, hey, we have Cheryl. Oh, back. Oh, we have her back. <laughs> the, I'm going to apologize. I can't. I. I have no idea what's going on with the Wi-Fi, but uh, it's, uh, maybe it's uh, just not strong enough here, so I apologize. Oh, hey, you know what, Cheryl? No worries, because we, we, uh, we just roll and go with it. We, go, we roll and we go with the flow, and uh, whatever happens. So, anyways, I had, I had gone through the introduction, and we talk, uh, let our audience know a little bit about what Fun to Feast is. Yeah. So let's just jump right into it with you. And typically, at the beginning of this show, we like to get to know our guests a little bit. So I'm going to ask you a few, a few sort of personal questions. So Cheryl, where did you grow up? Um, I actually grew up in Canada. I grew up, I was born in Quebec. I do not speak French. Let me clear that up. Everyone assumes that if you're born in <laughs> Quebec, you speak French. Um, but all of my family, specifically back then, we actually were just talking about it. They're all, they were all English. A lot of them speak French now, but... Uh, so I was there. We left when I was about eight and moved to a small town just outside of Ottawa, about 45 minutes away. And so that's where I grew up. And then I uh, left there as soon as I was old enough. Oh, <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, is Kristen on the panel today? I can see her face. I mean, I can't see her face, but Kristen, are you here? Nope. Uh, oh, oh, Kristen, yeah. I, I see her icon, but I, I don't see her either. So I wonder if she's having internet issues as well. You know, Carmen made a comment here. Um, she says, Spain is great for food. Most bars will serve a small appetizer with your beverage. What is your favorite cuisine, Jim? Do you have a favorite cuisine? What is, uh, what is my favorite cuisine? Hold on, mm -hmm. let me bring this. Uh, my favorite food... Well, what am I? What am I into lately? You know what? Uh, just the other day, one of my favorites is salmon. I love to I love to grill up salmon. You know, either out on the grill or um, pan fry it in the house. This weekend, I actually um, got. I I was at the store and I actually found on sale some wild caught salmon, which was pretty awesome. Uh, how about you, Kit? What's your favorite? I actually love uh, <laughs> simple food. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of American continental breakfast. That's I can have breakfast for dinner, lunch, mm. dessert, everything, <laughs> because bread is is my weakness. Yeah, you know. So I love American continental food. I love well, obviously I love Indian food, but I'm not. I, I cannot take too much spice, so I try to you know. Something blander is what works with me. So I'm not a big fan of Mexican or um, I love Thai. Actually, I love Thai. I love Thai food. Oh, me too, Kit. I love Thai. Do you, do you cook at all? Yes, I mean I do. Um, I, I I cook Indian food and I cook a little bit of Italian and Chinese food. So, but I I love to cook. I actually love to bake. Hey, hey Kristen is here. Hi. Hey, we Christmas. lost our guest, so you are our guest of honor for today. Oh, really? <laughs> is she going to come back in? <laughs> well, I don't know. She's having issues with uh, her Wi-Fi, with the Internet. So yeah. um, We've all we been may, there, right? Yes. <laughs> so we may just have to do our best to uh, have a footy conversation um, okay. amongst ourselves. 
Cool. So, Christian, <laughs> we're just talking about some of our favorite food, and I, I concur with you, Kit. I love Thai food. Me too. Yeah. Actually, one of my favorite, I think, I don't know if this is true, but I think it's even a little bit healthier than Chinese because it doesn't seem to mm -hmm. be as, as fried as much. Yes, it is um, healthier than Chinese. It is. Because so Chinese... I, I, Oh, we have our guest back. <laughs> we're we're going we're gonna to try something else. I might go bankrupt in the process from roaming in Canada, but you guys are worth it. <laughs> Ooh, Canada. Ooh, girl. Mm, I've got some friends in Canada. That gets expensive. Maple syrup on everything, and everything will be okay again, right? So. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, we, you know what? Hey, Cheryl, we were just talking about our favorite food, so maybe you can jump in and let us know what your favorite food is. I you know I eat anything that doesn't move faster than I do. So as someone said to me, so cheetahs are off the table because that's about it. You know, um, I love everything, which is one of the reasons why I got into FunToFeast.com. I, I I mean the the one thing that I guess I love the most is probably my mom's spaghetti sauce recipe. So yeah, that's probably my old favorite. So you always come back to a comfort food. I mean that's that's. Absolutely. You know, that's, there's nothing to replay that. I mean, you can explore every cuisine, but when my mom serves me food, there's really nothing like it. Yeah. It's just, I it's, think, to be fair, I would probably, now that you've mentioned that, Kit, I would probably expand it a little bit. Any mom's food. Because yes, any mom's food. There's nothing food. better than someone's mom making you a home-cooked meal. It's like, heaven! It's the best thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Because I'm, I'm actually um, quite... I used to be quite addicted to frozen food, but I've started this new thing in August where I'm kind of shunning frozen food and I'm cooking everything from scratch, and it's just a completely different feeling. Yeah, you know, it yeah. just it, you just relish what you cook, and it's it's emotional. <laughs> it is, and that's one of the reasons, you know, why I mean, why I got into the business I did because it's just there's I mean, there's so many things out there, and there's a lot of great industries and stuff, but there's nobody that's in food that doesn't love what they do, and they're not there because they don't love it. I mean, no one makes a whole meal just for themselves. You do it for other people. It's how you say, I love you, you know? So it's such a great thing. So, yeah. That's exactly what my mom says. I mean, she's such a fantastic cook. and Everybody comes to her. I mean, when she's at home, she even on normal days, she creates a feast because... She's like, in case somebody comes home, I need to be able to feed them. So exactly. it's, it's, her hospitality is just amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. That's it exactly. So we all love moms. Oh, yeah. I do. And I they're her. <laughs> so, Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Hey, hey, Cheryl, so tell us a little bit about the foodie scene in New York because I know you spend a good, deal, a good deal of time in New York City with your – um, bill paying job, right? Yes, so tell yes, us a little yes, bit yes. about we'll, we'll the still remain nameless because that's we're doing everything right. we can to get that to die on the vine. So yeah, um, no, the the food. I mean, New York is. I mean, it's phenomenal. I mean, the big big thing in New York right now is a lot of local farm to table. They're you know they're working with a lot of farmers that are within a 25 mile radius of the city, which it's it's amazing because you the city's got eight million people and you think 25 miles is you know maybe <laughs> we are just hanging on her word, aren't we? <laughs> we are. Hey, Kristen, so what's your favorite food? Oh, I definitely go with Thai. Um, I love any spices. I'm like, and I take pride in being able to say that I can take the spiciest stuff in the room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm the complete opposite. You just put a little bit of chili sauce. I can't eat it. I, I oh. have to add a lot of sugar in it and mix it up and ruin the whole thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, and I also, I love wasabi, too. I think wasabi goes with anything. <laughs> is, is that the ginger sauce? What is wasabi again? Wasabi is horseradish. It's oh, the okay, horseradish. Stuff. Okay. Hmm. And it, you can't have, like, a good meal. Like, if you're going to have it with wasabi, like, you have to have a wasabi rush. <laughs> it also doesn't count. <laughs> and I taught my my now twelve year old that too. So now she's got the wasabi rush going on. <laughs> that should be a hashtag. I need to put that in the <laughs> wasabi rush. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty awesome. Like uh. <laughs> so, hey, in Arizona, 
Is is there a lot of good Mexican, Kristen? You know what? I don't know. There probably is. I would assume, um, but it's not my favorite. And yeah, I'm with you. Like I don't like the fried stuff, and it seems like there is a lot of that. I haven't found like a whole lot of like healthy cuisine. I'm sure that there's got to be. And I also I I I eat fish sometimes, but I really try to you know not even eat fish. So a little bit limited there as well. Um, okay. But Thai yeah, is like yeah, totally vegetable okay. hmm. Yeah. Well, I call myself a pescatarian, um, but ethically a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be ethically a vegetarian too, I'm not. <laughs> don't tell my mom that. Oh my God, I hope she never sees this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, would she be so sad? Oh, uh, she'll be mad. I take her. So I take her tears. I can't take her anger. <laughs> <laughs> but then I just have to pout, and she'll be fine. So, <laughs> princess. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kristen. So, uh -huh. how long have you been a vegetarian, and how difficult is it to plan meals? Is it is it harder or is it easier? You know. Oh, I think it's so much easier because then, like, when I go to a restaurant or something, then I just sit down. And I'm like, okay, what's vegetarian? <laughs> and that makes it super easy because there's usually only like a few dishes. But a lot of places are really good about like letting you substitute. Um, like, if you have a meat dish that you want, like mm -hmm. whatever is else is ordered, you can just take the the fish out or the meat, whatever kind of meat out, and just ask for a side of vegetables instead. They're really pretty yeah. good about that. Yeah, especially especially since the vegan movement is is coming up now, and so they're very mindful of the fact that you know people want to be sure that you know everything is cooked in, I don't know, you call it kosher. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like well, yeah, like, like that, when, without the meat or yeah, by a, a rabbi. Because. Yeah, because my my husband is a pure vegetarian, so whenever we go to restaurants, he always substitutes um, you know, tofu. Tofu is a good substitute for protein. Yeah, you know, you don't have meat. It's actually a it's it's mon it's actually my favorite protein source is tofu. Yeah, it's so cool. It's so versatile. Yes, you can you can do so much with it. Actually, I've actually I've even scrambled tofu and and had it. So I, I love tofu. Oh, our guest is back. Yes, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's, hey. we, no, we actually have no, so much fun. No. <laughs> well, yeah, well, this is, this is the I'm joy glad. and the challenge of having a show like this, and we, we love dealing with the hot mess because yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, you know. I wanna, I want to apologize. Unfortunately, my the reason why I'm in Ottawa is because my father and his wife were in a very, very bad car accident, so I had to travel here to be with them. And so, and I still wanted to try and do this, and unfortunately, I'm causing I'm causing more harm than than maybe I intended. So I no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Actually, the best no, thing about get busy, the best thing about get busy, Cheryl, is that we are real. So we 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 just ourselves. So. You take the hot messes, we take everything, and we step on. <laughs> I'm, I'm bummed it's not, it keeps dropping, so we're trying, I don't know if it's Google so, or Chrome, so we're trying Safari now, it's like, it's crazy. So it could also be that just the bandwidth on their network just doesn't have enough for all of us to be partying together, so. Yeah. Well, how are they? Well, my dad is fine. My my um, technically my stepmother, but I mean she got married to my dad after my mom passed away. So you know I'm older now, so I don't think of her like that. But uh, Gail, she's she's a brilliant, wonderful, glasses nine tenths full type of girl, and she's she's in very very good spirits and she's okay. But she's got a very very badly damaged um, right arm, and so. She just had her third surgery late last night. We got back around one in the morning, and she came out of the surgery great. But we're just trying to do everything we can so that uh, that that arm sticks around for a little bit longer. She's not she's not done with it quite yet. So we're, oh, we're trying yeah. to. Keep that. so, yeah. That's, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, yes. you know what? And and that's really, I mean, Cheryl. Bottom line, that's more important than anything that we're well, doing that's, here. You no, know, and that's, so. that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons. Why I got into this because you know when you talk about the the one that pays my bills, I mean it's a huge corporate conglomeration. You're a number. You're you know there's a dead body on the ground behind you to succeed in that business, and you know and it was just it was like you know there's more to life than this, and it's about friends and family and love and food and all of that stuff. So 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I mean, I showed up at her hospital room with homemade banana bread and molasses cookies. Nice. That's, that's, that's the all, right? So. I'm a, I love to bake, so I'm happy. I love cookies. <laughs> and banana. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did you yeah. have the nursing staff trying to get you to bring some more? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we lost. Yeah, well, we're just we going to assume people. that the whole hospital staff was like, bake us some. <laughs> right. Totally. 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 So, yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, the bottom line is, um, you know, for all of really? us, what, what's really important in our lives, um, you know, w what are we doing with our, with our business, with our career, with, you know, Whatever it is that we do to sustain ourselves in life, what are we doing? Um, you know that really adds value to our life. And that's and what is it all for? Yes. Right. You know, I, I I'm helping. I, I think I told you this before, Jim, but I'm helping this nonprofit with some of their future stories. And what they do is they um, provide recreational services for adults and children with disabilities. And I've done a lot of writing, but that one story I wrote for them like three months ago, that gave me the most fulfillment. I'll tell you that. And that was a 500-word article, which, given what I write normally, is actually very little. So it's, but nothing gave me more fulfillment or joy than doing that. You know, there's always, when you have a purpose or a passion in life and you're contributing to the greater good of society, it just makes you feel so much better, I think. Right. What do you think? Yeah, I, I I agree. And you know what Cheryl was alluding to is that she decided, I think about a year ago, that she was going to change her life, and she, that she was going to, you know, being tired of the big corporate conglomerate that definitely absolutely pays the bills, but she just doesn't feel the passion, you know, for that particular um, job. She decided to take a huge risk and go you know, start, create her own path and do her own thing. And that was the, that was the, hey, Cheryl. Well, we're going to try the cell phone now. We're giving it our best shot, kids. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And we appreciate it, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my totally God. Do. I'm just so horrified. I'm like, this is crazy. You look clear. It looks clearer. Yeah, it there, does. There you go. Well, maybe. Too. Yeah, maybe it won't try and take as much bandwidth or something. I don't know. It just keeps saying network here. So, anyway. So. Cool. So, um, so let's jump into tell us tell us Cheryl about how Fund a Feast kind of came to life for you. What, what what was your passion? What was your inspiration for starting mm -hmm. that? And how did it kind of come into being? Well, as I mentioned a smidge earlier, a little bit, um, you know, I just, I've always loved food. My grandmother used to cater weddings, and my mom was a head cashier at a, at a &P grocery store in, in Canada, and, but she was crazy passionate about food. She'd worked with her mom, and she made pies out of the basement, and then she owned a tea room, and it was just, I mean, it's just always been in our life. I mean, we, we actually, I was just explaining to my niece that my maiden name is Durkey, which I'm not associated with the spice people, but I'm going to find a connection, I swear. But um, I said to her, you know you're real dirty when you're having breakfast talking about lunch or having lunch talking about dinner or having Thanksgiving dinner talking about what we're going to have for Christmas. So everything was <laughs> everything was always about food, and, and, it, and it's just the way our life always was. You know, it was kind of very Italian in a way, you know, where it was always the big meals and manja manja and stuff like that. So... <laughs> I was just, I've always loved it, but I love technology too, contrary to today's little lesson we're having here. Um, but I wanted to do something that was different, and I'd been watching crowdfunding for two, three years, and just the idea that people from all around the world could come and help you in a way that they really could add value, you know, in just little bits and pieces, whether, you know, actually crowdsourcing is what started, and then the funding aspect I just thought was amazing. and. When I looked at some of the bigger sites, who will we'll let them remain nameless. We're happy to imitate them, hoping they understand it's the greatest form of flattery. But, um, you know, those sites were out there, and, and I was like, but there isn't one really for food. And I'm like, how can we be in 2014 where everything is Food Network and Top Chef and magazines and restaurants and farmers and, you know, organic and 
how in the world can all of this be out there without a platform 100% for food? And I just was completely gobsmacked. And so I'm like, well, the kind of girl I am is I'm like, well, then I'll do it. So, so we started it up and the feedback has been incredible. People are just so excited we're there. And so, you know, our, some of our challenges are just letting people know we're there and, and letting them know we're new and to, you know, let them know to jump on in the water's warm and take a risk because they like some of the bigger platforms that are more stable, but that's okay. We'll, we'll win them over bit by bit. So um, we're just so fun to feast was born and it was, you know, just to get out there and let people have the ability to really create a specialty kind of a boutique crowdfunding site because people that are foodies want to support other foodies. They want to support mm -hmm. other drink campaigns and beverage campaigns and bloggers. I have a blogger that's going to launch a campaign in September. Some of you might know Maggie, um, you know, in the kitchen with Maggie. And so she's going to launch a video blog tour and she wants to raise funds for that. She's going to do that in September. And, you know, anything related to food we welcome anything food and beverage you know whether you're starting up a distillery that's the kind of stuff we're there for but you're not going to compete with speakers and iphones and you know watches and all these things that are phenomenal things but mm -hmm. that's not what this platform's about so everyone that shows up will be able to you, you have a completely tailored audience because one of the biggest challenges for people crowdfunding is that 60% of every campaign fails. Those are the stats, those are the hard numbers. And of those people that actually succeed, only about 15 or 20%, unless you're you know, that rock star potato salad guy, but only about 15 or 20% of them come from strangers. And that's the biggest reason is because they can't find you. They don't know you're out there and you're competing with so many other things that nobody's really interested in sometimes. So by giving them a, you know, a boutique crowdfunding site where everybody that comes there, they're only interested in food. They're not looking for anything else. So we're going to help them with those numbers. We're going to make sure that more strangers know about them and can help them. And that more people, you know, the only people looking at the site are food lovers and, you know, beverage lovers, people who love a good glass of wine or a shot of bourbon or, you know, and uh, who want, you know, a good, good meal to go with it type thing or a good story about a food experience. So that's what we're there for at Fun to Feast. Do you ever have, oh, go ahead. Oh, wait, let, let me ask one question, and then, um, Kristen, I'll turn it over to you. So let's talk for a second about that potato salad thing on that <laughs> yeah. other, like, really big platform. I am in love with that, him. I know. Why, why do you think that was so successful? And he what did can everything people... right. He did absolutely everything right. I'm not going to deny it. He put it out there as a complete joke. But people are, you know, I'm, I'm a little glass half full, too. I mean, he was very clear. He put a clean message. He put beautiful pictures. He was very clear on what he wanted to do with the money. He created all of his little rewards and they were all attainable and deliverable and everything was good. And I mean, and even his risks and challenges, he's like, his risk was, it might not be very good. I've never made a potato salad before. And he pushed it out to his people and it went viral. And that's just the bottom line. He did absolutely everything right it is the template for how to do it now everyone dreams of getting something like that viral and that's what we hope to you know help people do people will start looking at our site once we've got some great campaigns out there and they'll start sharing and they'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and it'll go but that's that's how it worked I mean he put it out there a little tongue-in-cheek and he's now he's making potato salad for a lot of people so yeah <laughs> how, how much potato salad right? for a living yeah yeah. How much did you raise, Cheryl? Do you know? He it had hit about seventy five thousand wow. dollars, James. But then it dialed back a bit. So I don't know. There's two ways it could have happened. Some of the donations might not have been legitimate, or people might have canceled their donations when they realized that it was kind of just a quirky kind of thing. But last time I checked, he was over fifty k. So he I he made know. some serious money. One of his challenges, though, is that um, with the site he was on, you can't donate any of that money. That's one of their conditions. So he really has to deliver some potato salad. So hopefully <laughs> he'll make the potato salad and then maybe take the end product to a food bank or something like that for them. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I need to hey, check Christine. this guy out. <laughs> yeah, just Google Google the other guy in potato salad and you'll see it. Yeah. 
I told him, I, I tweeted to him, and he, and he responded. I tweeted to him, and I said, hey, if you're ready to make a macaroni salad, call me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's great. Hey, Kristen, I'm sorry, you had a question. Go oh, ahead. yeah. When you're at these um, places, then, like, you have all these foodies and stuff together. Do you ever have any, any that are just like, oh, they make the whatever, they're going to be the most popular speaker. <laughs> like, are there anyone, like, is there anyone that, that like, generally dominates? Or is it Do just... Dominates like, what in, in... Oh, like when you show up to a convention or something. And I don't know, like for, like if you go to a tech convention, you know who's going to get, like, if there's going to be, like, different rooms, you know who's going to have the bigger room. Like... I'm just wondering if like you if it's like that at all, or if it's just more family um, when you get together. You're talking about like if I go to a conference or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, for example, you know, I was just at the fancy food show here in New York to go and see some of the new stuff, and I mean, don't get me wrong, people are swarming the Martha Stewarts. They're swarming. <laughs> I went to a, um, I was invited to attend, and I was very happy to do it a pitch conference where they had the um, editors at large for O Magazine and things like that. So no, there's there's a lot of celebrity aspects to it too, you know. But but when you actually really sit down and talk to people. I mean, so many of these companies that were there that were pushing some of their new food products and stuff, which we were super excited to see is, you know, they're, they all kind of, you know, started in their quote unquote garages and basements and kitchens. And, you know, they've got these great ideas and they're putting that stuff mm. out there. So, but, but it's, you know, it's not, it's different in a way, but there's a lot of aspect that's very similar. You know, the, it does the celebrity and stuff like that, that is out there. So, you know, and, and even in the food biz, they, you know, they love the celebrity chefs and they love what they can do and stuff like that in the following. So, yeah. So do you think that it's like um, a little bit more leveling because the, the like, food is leveling, right? Yeah. It, yeah, that's cool. At the end of the day, it's good or it's bad. You know, you can be whoever you want and it can be good or bad. I mean, one recent example is, you know, Giada is huge. Everyone loves Giada. She just opened this restaurant in Las Vegas and yeah, you know, it's like she's trying to do everything she can, but if but if the food doesn't deliver, it's going to be challenging and unfortunately Pete Wells from the uh, New York Times was out there and I think it's kind of a thumb halfway, but she, she let go her executive chef like a week before they launched. So that's a tough nut to crack right before you launch a big restaurant like that. But they're, you know, but they're going to do everything they do. She's brilliant at what she does and I'm sure she'll be successful. But those are kind of the things at the end of the day, if it's not good or if it doesn't work, if it's, you know, like a gadget or something, I mean, it'll, it'll self-level. It'll absolutely self-level. I mean, New York is a perfect perfect paradigm for that i mean if if your food is not good there's six restaurants within spitting distance of that one so you know people will instantly turn yelp you negatively and move on to the next one they don't have a lot of patience in the big city so you know they're they're not going to give you too many second chances in the food world that's awesome that you mentioned yelp because i want to learn more about that is that something that is like really um like a tool that is really used by the industry it, it is for, I mean, for, I use it pretty much exclusively for, you know, locations and restaurants. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a catch-22 and you have to, you have to be a smart, what I call a smart Yelper because Yelp companies that, you know, that land on that platform, um, you can pay to have a certain level and you can get, um, you can get reviews removed even if you've paid enough and and that's I'm not I'm not too cool with that and there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background that that doesn't you know that isn't that and you can also have all your friends and family go on and give you positive reviews and but at the end of the day if you've got you know hundreds of reviews you know a smart yelper as I say can really sort of look through them weed out some of the ones that are valid read out some of the ones that are blatantly obviously you know not someone who just straggled on on the street. But um, I actually, there was an article by Ruth Reichel who used to do gourmet and things like that and is quite revered in the industry. And she actually was a little harsh to people like me who use Yelp. And she's like, she actually, I think the word she used was idiots. And uh, I was actually really offended by it because, you know, we're just sitting here normal, average Joes, mere mortals, we don't have too many options. You've got Zagat, you've got Yelp, 
you've got you know some reviews on Google and open table and things like that but you know we're not you know rubbing elbows with some of the top restaurant critics in this in the country and so that's all we have and that's those are the only tools we we can really use ourselves and so it was a little disappointing that she kind of poo-pooed it a little but uh, you know I'm, I'm still a Yelper at heart and if I go to a great restaurant I will you know order a not great restaurant I absolutely go out there and, and try and share the love or let people know because you know people are working so hard for their money these days we don't want to waste it on a bad location so <clears throat> what hey, is Cheryl. Oh, I'm sorry. hey Cheryl so it sounds like a great opportunity for a fun to feast project for somebody to maybe come up with a novel uh, technology that does a better job at reviewing than Yelp does. It sounds like an opportunity. There is, there is absolutely, and there's maybe some folks out there that just need a little bit more money to launch their, you know, launch their app or things like that. But no, absolutely, those are all the types of things that we would love to be a part of, love to be a part mm -hmm. of, and help folks out. Yeah. Totally. What is, what is that tool? Food spotting? Is that it? I've never used it. Well, you go to a restaurant, and if it's a, a you can share, uh, like you can send pictures of a meal that you really like. So it's more specific than a Yelp review. Yelp review is more general. Okay, when this restaurant, this restaurant was good. The service was good. But this is, I think, it's food spotting. So you spotlight the food. Yep. So have, yep, absolutely, have, absolutely. Think, I mean, I've got. I've got so many downloaded. I've got that one too, but it's tough because it's just so tough. There's because there's so many great sites out there. Like I actually, my husband and I, we wander around New York, and I'm like, we need a place where we can record places we want to try, places we have tried, where I make a list of places I've been to. And so I stumbled across an app called Matchbook, which you know when you go to a restaurant, they always give you a Matchbook when you leave with their names and stuff on it. So it's a cool, it's a cool name, and I can say places I've been and what I liked about it. And and then when I'm in that location, I can like search on my little phone and show all the places we've been to or places we want to go to. There's so many great things. There's um, a food component to Evernote, which is incredibly handy to keep track of stuff like that as well. Food spotting is fantastic. You know, Tumblr, just Tumblr and Instagram. You know, mm -hmm. even Open Table. I mean, Open Table is out there and they just got bought out. And, you know, so they're, you know, they're there to be able to show people reviews of restaurants as well, which is how a lot of people make their reservations. You know, they're a huge reservation system that these restaurants use. There's, there's just so many that it's good and it's bad because it gives you some fantastic options but it makes it challenging because it's like you know which one do you go to because there's just so many options so. oh yeah that that is a problem with today's um <laughs> world wide web it's just got too much information yeah exactly. <laughs> How you sift the, the, the the real ones from the you know from the pausers from from the fake ones so yeah. it's that's yeah. the, i think so what what would you say is you know has been your biggest challenge in in setting this up you know in setting up Fun to Feast, it, it just mm -hmm. really is is competing with the big dogs because okay. people, they have a little bit of a misconception that they, they firmly believe that the platform will bring the lion's share of the money to them. And that's just on any platform. I mean, whether it's, you know, GoFundMe, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, any of the guys that are tried and tested and true that are out there, they'll be the first ones to tell you, you don't get a lot of site traffic unless you get what they call homepage advantage. And if you hit that homepage on some of those big sites, absolutely, it's like a gift from God, you know, and people will then see you. But if you talk to someone who's got a food campaign, they have approximately 300 active food campaigns on my, you know, on the biggest guy that's out there of five thousand campaigns so someone's got to go to food then they got to troll through all of those they've got to find something about yours that's interesting enough to even click on then they've got to drink your kool-aid and want to support you so you know it's a much longer path than what we're going to give them on fund feast so i actually had a campaign that launched today i'm super excited so it's a restaurant in new york city called goost organics it's um, 100% organic, certified organic restaurant. They have the only, I've never even heard of this, they have the only certified organic bar in the world. Oh, wow. And so they're there, but they, they faced some challenges because they, they realized that um, a regular menu that was served organically wasn't really something that people were asking for because if you were truly into organics, you didn't want it in regular food like a cheeseburger. 
And if you are into cheeseburgers, you don't really care if it's organic or not, right? Because you're kind of, you know, you're looking for that junky comfort food, which everyone loves. So the um, there's a couple of folks that are co-founders, uh, Paul and his wife, Kiki. And Kiki's the one driving this campaign. And that girl will make it happen. She is brilliant at what she does. And she's out there. And what they're doing is they're going to fly in an executive vegan chef. And they're going to work to take the restaurant vegan and organic so that there are more options for all the vegans out there and vegetarians and, you know, be out there in the New York City area. So they just launched a campaign. They're looking to raise $10,000 to fly the chef in and help train their staff on how to do a 100% vegan menu and have a fantastic vegan menu out there and be able to cook that food. And they're also going to be bringing in a chef from um, a spot local to New York called the V-Spot. And uh, he's going to come in and help that. So Diego and, and those two chefs are going to work together with them. And so they're going to raise $10,000 to make that happen. And we just launched them today. So I'm super excited. Cool. So, yeah. So Cheryl, go check that, them out. Yeah. So that, they're right yeah, there we, on we my totally page. Will. And um, yeah, be be sure that hey kid, be sure that we get a link up on our in the comment section. Yes, yeah. I'm just checking. That. Yeah, yeah they've got my homepage campaign. advantage because they're the only guys out there right now. I'm working with some other ones in the background, and that's one of the problems too, kid, is that it takes a long time to launch a campaign. People don't realize how much background work there is, you know. And there's a misconception that you just put it up there and complete strangers will throw money at you. But you have to work for it and you have to respect people's time and money. If they're going to look at you and they're going to donate, there's a lot of legwork to do. Let people know it's coming and put together a beautiful video and make sure that the rewards you give them are really of value to these folks. So that, you know, when they're going to give you their hard-earned cash, that you're giving them something back that they'll really use and appreciate. You know, and it, and you know, but you still get, you know, the lion's share of the money so that you can make your dream happen. You know, so it's fantastic. Yes. So it, but it can take two to six months easy to launch a campaign, and people really think it's a week or two process. So. <laughs> yeah, but if you do it right, I think there's no better testimonial than the fact that you've raised ten thousand dollars organically, just based. It's kind of like, uh, it's it's like a pre-sale review or whatever. You know, pre-release. Absolutely, uh, test, you know, um, recommendation or endorsement from the public, which yeah. is by far the best endorsement and way better than any snooty critic can ever give you. So. Exactly, <laughs> the the and that's one of the perks that people don't really realize. They think, oh, I'm going to get this money and I'll be able to do, you know, buy that freezer or, or you know, create that new menu they don't even understand the incredible benefit of the marketing aspect because like you said people are out there they're going to give you feedback listen to them this is your audience this is a pre campaign for whatever it is you're actually going to build or manufacture you know cuz we I'm working with some folks that do spices and I'm like you put all those different spices out there if they don't order you know cajun heart throb or whatever you might call it then you know that's not the one to sell the first day out I mean, that's the way it is. And that you'll get the most amazing marketing tool from, from a campaign and you'll get a lot of positive feedback and you'll get negative, but any feedback is incredibly important to whatever you're trying to launch. So take that and run with it. Hey, wow. Cheryl. So, so let's, let's take mm -hmm. a step back. If, if somebody is considering doing a campaign specifically mm -hmm. in food, but maybe not necessarily, what are the most important things they can do to prep for the campaign, during the campaign, and after the campaign? Well, the big, big things for pre-campaign is network, 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 Google Hangout, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, you know, LinkedIn, build, build, build that network because no matter what we do on our platform or any other platform, you, you really are reaching out to your own network, be it personal, be it colleagues. So build that network as much as possible. And then when you're actually creating the campaign, be very, very clear on what you're doing. Be very open. Be very honest. These people will read through this campaign and they need to believe in you. And that's the bottom line. If you've got that passion and you've got that drive, you need to make sure you communicate it in a way that's crystal clear to the people looking at that campaign because that's all they know about you is that little two minute video and the little script. So those are the most critical pieces. Then, you know, and pre market. Let people know it's coming. Let people know when you're going to launch. Get them excited. The rule of thumb 
James, is to have 30% of your funding ready on day one in your back pocket. Because if you have your campaign people and your network ready to give you that money and within the first three to four days you've reached 30% of your goal, then people that don't know you, they're going to look at that and they're going to go, wow, this is really hot. This is happening. People believe in these people. I want a piece of this. And that's when they start jumping into the pool as well with this. So it works really well. But once your campaign's up, the absolute best thing to do is constantly comment on it, update people, let people know you appreciate what they've done. Every contribution, send out a personal thank you email. And I don't care if you get 2,000 emails you have to reply to or 4,000. You thank every single one of those people. I have had 10 campaigns on my site so far. And the most negative feedback I've heard was that people contributed and the campaign owners did not respond to these people in any regard from a personal you know, email. The site will send them a thank you note, but they really expected people to reply to them and say, thank you so much and we appreciate what you've done. And if that means you hire your friends, your nephews, your mom, your dad to reply to emails, you do it. You get out there and you thank people, whether they gave you a dollar or a thousand dollars, every single dollar you're going to get is going to help you get where you need to go. And then, you know, again, when you're campaigning, you make sure that you're marketing and letting people know you're still out there, letting people know how much longer there is. Because the thing I always remind people is that a campaign's a lot like getting a wedding invite. People might want to come and they might want to support you, but they're going to wait until the last day. So you want to keep, keep on them and don't, you've got to believe in this so strongly that you're willing to make a couple enemies by, you know, maybe asking them more times than you might feel comfortable with, but you've got to be out there because this is important to you and the people that you might hire as a result of this. This is great for your community, great for the company, great for the country, potentially, depending what you're trying to do with it. So you want to really make sure that you're out there and they're letting them know. At the end of a campaign, the big, big thing is just make sure that you keep very open communication with people that it's ended. Let them know when you're going to ship out the rewards. Make sure that you keep to that schedule. Make sure that those rewards go out exactly as you promised they would. You can hit manufacturing delays. I've I've funded campaigns that, you know, haven't been able to hit their targets, but I'm okay with it because they're very upfront. I get an email. I know the situation. I know what's happening. At the end of the day, it's just open communication and letting people know. People will back you. They'll support you. They'll stand by you as you bump, go through your bumps and bruises to get things out. But just try and be, you know, timely and, and get it out there. And, and again, be so incredibly sincere and appreciative of what people have given you. Hey, Cheryl. And you... What are some things that differentiate you? What's your unique value proposition that you offer people who um, run a campaign with you and your platform that they won't see on any of the other platforms that are out there? The, well, the, as I mentioned before, a couple of the biggest things we have is that we're only going to work with food and beverage, and so all of our network supports that. Everybody that comes to our site, that's what they're looking for. But the added special ingredient that we give is that We'll mentor you and we'll consult with you the entire way. We will work with you on your rewards. We will give you ideas for rewards. We'll copyright it. We'll edit it. We'll help teach you how to network. We'll share you with our networks. You know, you're not going to get the CEO of any of the big boys on the phone with them to help you step through it. And that's probably the biggest thing that we'll do is that we'll really try and help people understand what it takes to run a successful crowdfunding campaign. Oh, that's awesome. That's great, Cheryl. Um, what, how, let me kind of take a step back and what, what are some of the things that you're doing to market Fund a Feast? Like how, I'm how are you talking to up? you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, you know, I've reached out. We've made some phenomenal connections there. We're working, we're building relationships with, um, you know, uh, uh, food kitchens that are out there and incubators. Um, there's a new one out there called Galley and we've partnered with them and as they come in and have people use their commercial kitchen space, they're going to let them know that if they are looking for funding to launch whatever it is they're working with, they've partnered with us and so they're going to send us to us. 
We've also working with a company called Undiscovered Kitchen, which is a phenomenal online platform to be able to give people a, an area that they can go and market a brand new product. Because when you've got a brand new product, it's like you need someone to sell it. And so they've created a site uniquely for those types of entrepreneurs that are out there. Um, I run a Twitter chat, which I think, James, you're going to be mm -hmm. a part of tomorrow night. And so we run this Twitter chat for foodpreneurs is the hashtag. And it's preneurs with a plural. And it's so it's for anybody that's trying to be an entrepreneur in the food and beverage industry. And we share all sorts of fantastic startup info for these folks because they're out there and they just have these questions and they want to know how to do it. We're participating in so many Google Hangouts. We're getting so much love on Google Plus, and we can't thank people enough there. We've managed to, you know, connect with Chef Dennis Litley, who's got a phenomenal following, and people have been so receptive. And, you know, we're trying to really grow it organically. I haven't reached out to main mainstream media because we want to make sure that we're scalable and that we don't get too big for our britches and that we can help the folks that are out there. And we're looking to get some successful campaigns because that's probably – one of our largest challenges right now is that people come to the site and they don't see the campaigns that were unsuccessful and they're looking for successful campaigns, but it's a cart horse. If you don't start to launch and get successful, then, you know, then there isn't one to show. So that's, that's one of the things we're working hard right now is working with these campaigners to help them be successful. What's, what's that quote? It reminded, reminded me of that quote. Um, you, you will miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I unless, love unless that. you take I a shot, that. you're not going to, you're not going to know if somebody's going to dance with you unless you ask. So, yeah. you know, you just got to go for it. I love hey. that expression. That's brilliant, Kit. Absolutely. So, hey, Kit. Yes, um, Cheryl brought up that tomorrow night at what what time, Cheryl? 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay, 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to do this amazing combined forces Twitter chat with Get Busy, a live Twitter chat with Get Busy and Fun to Feast, and it's going to be all things foodie. I think Cheryl may have a specific Yay! topic. Um, I would like, I would, maybe maybe we can focus on your newest campaign and focus most of the, the Twitter chat around what's going on with that campaign, but w whatever you feel is best, Cheryl, we will support you 100%. Kit is crazy about Twitter. Besides Facebook, Kit, I know that's one of your favorite platforms. Yeah. So we want to help. Our our mission tomorrow is to help Cheryl get a bunch of people at this Twitter chat and participating and just learning about Fund the Feast, learning about what whatever specific topic we're going to be discussing tomorrow, and just having like a foodie experience on Twitter. So what what, what do you think? Kit, I think it's fantastic. Um, oh well, well, let's start spreading out the word. I mean, um, you know, whatever we can from today to tomorrow, I'm willing to do. You know, and and beyond because I think this is is this a weekly chat, Cheryl, or it is, is it? It is a it weekly is. chat. Kit. Oh, okay, it's, um, cool. Yeah, the hashtag is foodpreneurs, and our our main goal is one of the one of the big things is it. Um, you know, one of our competitors, uh, a smaller firm. One of the things they felt was that oh, the most important thing to someone being successful was money. And James and I have talked about this before. I cannot disagree more. I cannot disagree more. Money is absolutely important to starting a new business, but information is paramount to helping them where they need to be and feedback and being able to connect with folks. And so what we want to do is we created a Twitter chat for foodpreneurs, as I mentioned, that's the hashtag, and we provide them startup info. So we've taught them about social media, we've talked to them about trademarking, we've talked to them about um, food trends and things like that. So maybe tomorrow, if we can get a lot of bandwidth, maybe tomorrow would be a great day for it to be about, you know, actually about how to crowdfund something. So, you know, and that's something that we'll work with on folks to make sure that we get them that feedback. So, Hey, yeah. Jim, um, have you connected Cheryl with Manolis? Yes, Manolis yes. and I okay. are absolutely mm -hmm. in touch. We love Manolis, so yeah. 
Yeah, because he's he's the go-to guy for crowdfunding. So I, I mean, I, I'm sure you'd have connected. I just want to throw it out there to make sure you are. Yeah, we have we have Manolis is Manolis. Um, he you know his platform is fantastic. He he's got a lot of you know equity-based stuff as well, and he you know he works and helps people as well. His um, I think maybe the the little bit of a gap that Manolis and I have started to talk about a bit is that, you know, some of his folks are a little bit bigger um, type mm. of campaigns. You know, if you're only looking for two or three thousand dollars, then you know it's it's a little bit smaller than what Manolis and their crew focus on right now. Um, okay. They're looking okay. at you know some that are a smidge bigger, but it's a fantastic network and connection. I know I'm I'm invited to a lot of his. Google Hangouts and stuff like that, and he's a fantastic guy. And I also was on a chat with um, one of his colleagues as well. So, yeah. Totally. So yeah, okay, I so we. Oh, sorry, ahead. I should also connect to you. I'm not sure to connect you with Lynn Johnson. She's on Facebook. She's on Google Plus. She's on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. That'd be um, brilliant. She is a. She's a. I mean, she's not in the food. She's a social media consultant, but she loves food. <laughs> Every, she loves that's the best healthy. part. Everybody loves food. And, yeah. and her pictures always make me salivate. I mean, she knows how to take beautiful pictures of food. I mean, she'll be a good connection for you, you know, because she knows a lot of people like in California and that side of the uh, the country. She lives in, I think she lives in Napa Valley. So she has lots of connections across the nation and she's a lovely person to just be connected to. She's that a lot of fun nice. and... I, you know, I just are you on Facebook at all, or um, are so, you? all the time? Facebook. If you go to Facebook slash Fun to Feast, we're there. Okay. Um, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You know, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Google Plus. Perfect. I'm in two Google she, Pluses because you've got Fun to Feast Google Plus, and then my personal one, which I think is what I'm talking about. Oh, to perfect. Because she's she's yeah. everywhere too. She loves Instagram yeah. too because she loves taking pictures. So I, I will connect you with her. She's just a wonderful resource to be connected to. I think That'd we really like that. And, um, and we call yeah. all those beautiful pictures food porn. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's exactly what she calls them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. She calls that's them it. food Absolutely. porn. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so, yeah. that's, that's yes. the only kind of porn that we allow in my house, I guarantee you. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> But this is fantastic. I absolutely love, what I love about you the most is you're very clear-headed. You know where you want to go. You understand the challenges. You understand what you need to do. You understand what you should not do. I think I, I think you're going to be super successful. I'm telling you oh, that. Oh, thank you so so much. It's the it, you know feedback from you guys. I mean, I am you know I'm I'm not you know 20 something, and I respect all of them. But I've learned that you know there's a lot of mistakes you make in life, and I the one thing I've learned is that I am happy to make some you know let someone else make the mistakes and learn from people. And, you know, I admit what I know, I admit what I don't know, I reach out for help. You know, which is probably one of the toughest things with crowdfunding: asking, actually putting your heart out on the line and asking for help and that's the big thing and that's what we try and help people do but I really appreciate that but any connection any feedback any suggestions we are open to being there and you know it, I learned a long long time ago I think I was about 12 and my brother had a pen pal in Malaysia and I just got overwhelmed with this sense of sadness that I could never you know, truly understand the world from other people's viewpoints, that I would only ever see the world from my own point of view. And that kind of broke my heart a little bit. I thought, you know, if I actually take my eyes to different places and travel, and I've been fortunate enough to work in Pakistan and overseas a bit and, you know, see the world from so many different places and learn from all these amazing different people and cultures, you know, at the end of the day, we're all here. We all love food. We all love our friends and families, and we're all just here to be connected in one global harmonious situation and so any advice we're happy to learn from that so that we can be better for the people that need us that, that are out there so I really appreciate that kid oh totally no we're, we're gonna close out but Cheryl hang on as we go to the green room when we go into the green room we're gonna brainstorm just for a few seconds the Twitter chat tomorrow Perfect. And we'll make Thanks. sure that we're we're on the same page and that we promote it and we get the word out there um, so again Thank you, everybody, for joining us this week on Get Busy. I'm super excited about seeing what Cheryl's got coming up. I definitely want to follow this latest campaign. I think it's going to be really uber, an uber cool uh, campaign. It's going to be super successful, and we're going to do everything that we can, um, Cheryl, to support you with that particular campaign. 
And but thank um, you all and everybody that supported fundafeast.com is so so thank you Paul. We've had some phenomenal people stand behind us and help us, you know, a lot of it free of charge and they're they're all here to help us be successful and your support means the world to us. We can't thank you enough at Fundafeast. Yes. So thank you dream audience. Thank you for all, yeah. all of the engagement. We will definitely go out into the uh, into the comment section and put some information out there. We'll, um, when each one of us has a little bit of time later on in the afternoon, we'll get back to you. Again, we appreciate you guys more than ever because without you, um, we wouldn't be get busy. So, once again, thank you. I don't, I don't have a guest yet for next week, Kit. I think you sent me some information on a possibility. So yeah, we'll, we'll we, we can discuss that. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll work on that also. Once again, Get Busy Crew, Get Busy Audience, thank you for another great episode, and we'll see you again next week. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody.